Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today is going to be Halls of Fabrication, the trial from the Morrowind chapter. And this is quite a long trial, it is quite tricky. There's lots of mechanics that you have to pay attention to, especially your base mechanics as far as interrupts, dodges and blocks are concerned. So pay very close attention to those. This is going to be a flat demonstration of the mechanics, showing you exactly what you could do in order to pass it. This is not a nuke fest. There are enough videos out there about that. This is to teach you how to pass it. Here we go. Now, when you first get into this trial, you'll be presented with a lot of ads, an absolute abundance of them. There are scarabs, there are kind of gua looking kaguki type things, or however the hell you pronounce those. There are also spheres, all manner of different nasties that you have to pay attention to. Now, there are several ways to do this. Lots of people, especially if they're in a nuke group, like to grab every single ad possible and just run all the way to the boss. We're not going to do that. We're showing you the mechanics. So watch out for the two legged triceratops looking things. They will occasionally do a charge effect, so you have to make sure that you're standing away from them or out of their face. The tanks at this point, as you can see here, are turning them away from the group, and the charge is aiming at the tanks. All the DPS should really stay behind targets at all times anyway, unless it's a dragon, because that's, face it, most of the time, the teeth are in front of the boss, and you don't want to be bitten by them. So just be very careful of your positioning. Healers and DPS should be behind the enemies. Tanks should obviously be in front of them turning away. Now this part here is a little tricky. This is where you get introduced to your first sphere type enemies. Now if you've seen Dwemer spheres before, you know that they can be quite nasty. They do little jumps and spins and such, but these need interrupting. They will do channeled effects on a target of their choice. And if you don't interrupt them quick enough, they will kill people. So be very, very careful with these. Stand behind them, do the damage that you can, interrupt them as soon as they try channeling any ability. Sometimes you can have three or four at a time and they'll all channel and you have to get those interrupts in quick. You notice that the tank has pinned two of them together here. If you can pin them all together, that's great. If not, if you have to do them individually, one after the other after the other, just make sure that your base mechanics are at heart. Your whole group should be focused on getting ready for that interrupt, not necessarily trying to nuke it. If you've got low damage, it's not a problem. What is a problem is if you don't pay attention to that basic mechanic. So we've got a second wave here. You have three and then another three. Tank very carefully here has placed them all together. If you're used to pulling ranged targets, that is a lot, lot easier to do than it looks. Um, but it depends on your group. If you've got a very new tank, that might be quite tricky. You might have to just deal with them split up. Um, range targets, by the way, for tanks. If they don't come to you because they're ranged and you can't chain them, if you go 28 meters outside of their range, they will come to you. And then you kind of come back in again to get back to them. So again, be very, very careful with these enemies. Stack them if you can. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. But the most important thing is you must interrupt. And this is very important for the first boss. If you can't manage as a group to interrupt those tiny ads, you are screwed on the first boss. So be very, very careful. Now, I've got a few more here. Watch your feet because they do drop AoEs. And of course, the cargo is do actually charge. Again, tanks here are very successfully stacked up the group. So that interrupts are easy because they're all close together. And that charge from the two-legged dude will only be aiming at the tank. Just bear in mind, of course, if anything does go loose and it does put a charge projectile or telegraph on the ground, make sure that you do get out of it. It will knock people down. If you're a tank, you'll probably survive. If you're a DPS, you might get one shot if there aren't enough heals on the ground. So be very careful with that. Another stack up of three adds. Again, like I said, some groups like to pull all of these at once and just drop nukes on them at the end. If you're not capable of that, or you're not ready for it, it's not a problem. You can take them bit by bit by bit, one ad pull after another. In fact, if you're learning this trial, it's actually safer to do so because it's a lot cleaner and you can see what's going on. Now, as we get down towards the end here, we are going to be presented by a rather large kind of boss guarding pull. They are a bit spread out, so this is tricky for the tanks. Watch out for the small stuff on the ground because they do fire little grenade things everywhere. You don't want to get caught by those. But again, if you can help it, stack these up and keep on the interrupts. AoE damage as much as possible if you've got it in your group would be great because then you get them all down evenly But if you have to deal with them one at a time, then so be it It's not the end of the world. None of them are going to explode just because you're taking too long You will kill them no matter what as long as you're not all dead now this boss can be tricky It has been nuked difficulty wise quite a considerable amount um, over the last couple of patches or so and it has been made a bit easier for good reason. Basically, people have struggled with this ever since it's released, but it's still tricky, so you have to pay very close attention. You got um, a negatrix and a positrix, left and right. See the beam between the two? That must be split. 
if that beam is on them, they are both stronger and they will kill DPSs, especially with that little effect there. You'll be very, very careful, but you will need to pull them together. So you have a tank either side, one on one side of the room, one on the other, so they're apart. Now, the tail whip that you saw there with the lightning going across the floor, that used to stun you, but it doesn't seem to anymore because of the alterations to the trial, but you still should block that or get in the gaps if you can because then you'll negate a lot of the damage. You do get hit with minor vulnerability if you get hit with a lightning, so you do actually take more damage from the bosses when that happens. In the meantime, whenever these spheres appear, the tanks need to coordinate together. To bring the targets close so the beam appears and put the sphere in the middle. If the sphere is in the middle of the beam, the beam will break the damage shield on the target and then you can kill the sphere. If not, then you're screwed. If they stay together too long, they'll enrage and they both get really, really powerful. You don't want to do that. Keep them apart at all times unless you're breaking the beam. In the meantime, of course, 75%, as you can see, there are loads and loads of ads on the room, these little scarab type things. Now, they can be chained and they can be uh, rooted, but taunting them is a little bit of an issue. You don't really want these on the tanks anyway. So if you can help it, try and get these in the middle of the room and drop ulties on them. If not, just make sure you're focusing these, not the boss. Now, you'll notice throughout the fight, we're actually focusing on one boss and not the other. That is because you want to get them down both roughly the same time. So we focus one until it's low health, and then we switch over to the other. Do not kill one before the other unless you're ready to, because if one dies, they will enrage. Now, other things to pay attention to. The lightning on the ground, don't stand in it. It will really, really hurt, especially if you're a tank. A couple of ticks or so, and you're actually going to die, so be careful of those. The splash we've already gone over, where he whips his tail, and the lightning splashes come out. Block that if you can. And also, all the time, the two bosses can throw an attack at the tank, and if they don't block it, if they're not ready for it, it can actually pin them on the ground, and that will need to be interrupted by your group. Also, the further you are away from the boss while it's taunted, you're more likely for it to jump on your head, so be careful when you're maneuvering around the room as well. Now, the spheres, which you can see are getting a little bit overwhelming now. There's a few of them in the room. The tanks need to coordinate, break one bubble, spread out break another bubble spread out as soon as the bubble's broken you can kill those spheres but all the time they're in the room and this is key your your group must be interrupting them if you don't interrupt them they will hit you with a snipe you see one there is trying to do it interrupt him no problem if that snipe hits someone it's a one shot the rest of the time they are throwing out poison injections at the group and they will need to be purged so you will want purge on your healers or your tanks or your even your dps if you want any form of purify or purge needs to be used actively in this fight not just for the poison injection because it's very powerful but also because the two bosses do put a bleed on the tanks and it's quite hefty now this the uh, scarabs or the beetles that came in earlier they come in in three different increments in the fight so they come in at 75 percent they come in at 50 percent and they come in at 25 percent bear in mind this is percentage of the entire boss fight not of individual bosses if you look at the top you can see the health bar for the whole fight the two bosses make up that health bar. So 75%, 50%, and now as you can see, 25%. They must be focused. So save your ulties for them if you want. This fight doesn't have to be a burn fest. You can take your time, but you must be very clean. So it's rinse repeat from here. Two tanks stay apart, focus one boss until it's low. In the meantime, bring them together to break a shield, take them apart again and kill the sphere. Pay attention to interrupts on both the bosses and the spheres. No interrupts equals dead. And when they are both very, very low health, then you decide which one you kill first. And once it's down, this is when execute panic usually sets in. Do not panic. Everything will enrage because one of the targets is dead. Yes, but what you need to do is focus on your rotations to make sure you obviously kill the remaining target. But above all, no matter how long it takes you, you must interrupt all of those ads. Keep the purges coming, keep the heals coming. If you don't interrupt those spheres at low health, there's no point you even trying to hit the boss because you're all going to die. Lots of people try to burn through that and force the boss to die and ignore the snipes coming in from the spheres. That's a domino effect. Make sure you pay attention to those, otherwise everyone is dead at execute. If it helps you, put on some very defensive buffs and bonuses and sets and all that kind of stuff. And while you're going through the fight, just make sure that you get them both down very low, then that execute is much, much shorter. If you kill one very, very fast and the other one's got loads and loads of health left, you're going to have to have that enrage mechanic for much longer and that does become a problem. Now, just to recap, lightning on the ground, stay out of it. Lightning from the tail whip, block it or get in the gaps. The jump on the tank, someone needs to be ready to interrupt it or the mechanic that actually happens when they're close by as well. It can happen randomly, they must block it. And the rest of the time, pay it pay close attention to the interrupts from the spheres while the tanks put the beams together to break the spheres damage shield you won't kill it 
if the shield's not broken. So bring them together, split them up. Bring them together, split them up, rinse, repeat. Now, it's going to take a bit of practice, but it's not as bad as it used to be, so hopefully you will be okay with that and you must bring purges. Now, this pull is quite straightforward, although they can hurt a lot. You know how to deal with the spheres already. If you've got past that boss, you can interrupt stuff, so now you've got no excuse. Keep doing it. Spheres need to be pulled together, the two legates need to be pulled together, and if you can stack them, that would be great, but if not, it's not the end of the world. You want to get rid of these guys first, though, because the main problem with the spheres is that they interrupt the mechanic. If it's not dealt with, we'll wipe people. The two legged guys, it's just a case of staying behind them, because if they do try and charge anyone, hopefully it'll be aimed at the tank. As you can see there, that telegraph, simply step out of it, it's not that bad. But after these are dead, now we're going to see the second boss, and this one can get kind of tricky. There's a lot going on. It can be quite quick in comparison to how it used to be in the past, but you will have to pay very close attention to your feet and the percentages of the boss for each mechanic coming in. Now, you want to tank him in the middle. If you can, fail on that, you can tank him way at the back there where the tank is. There's a reason for that, but I'll explain it in a moment. So, pretty standard stuff. As soon as the fight starts, everyone get behind the boss and start slapping him. But you have to pay attention to mechanics. When he spins his staff around, he's going to put lightning across the floor. That jump there. You need to block that to make sure you mitigate a lot of the damage. He will cast AoEs across the floor in the form of a triangle. You can either block it or get out of it. Just be very careful. And also a Centurion will spawn. As you can see there, he had two different uh, triangle telegraphs on the ground. Two, one front and back, one left and right. And he switches from one to the other to one to the other. That is steam. You do not want to stand in that. Now, pay very close attention here. When DeVaith calls for the Fabricants being empowered, there are four platforms around the room, and you need four people to all get one each. This is very, very important. If you don't do this, the group is going to die. Four people need to go upstairs and deal with the mechanics upstairs, which I'm now about to show you. Pay very close attention to this, because if you get it wrong, you're screwed. All you need to do is activate the synergy, and you'll go up into the ceiling. There'll be four different areas, one for each player. Now, what you need to do is you need to hug up together, decide which one you're going to fight first, and stand behind it if you have the lightning beam. You need to get these down. If you have the lightning beam, you basically end up debuffing it, kind of like the first boss, and you remove the damage shield and... The damage doesn't hit you, it will hit the target instead. It takes a little while to kick in, but you need to do that. If you stand behind it, you're safe. If you stand to the side of it, you're going to have to try and out heal it, and you're not going to do it. It's very difficult to do so. But as soon as you've got that in there, you're good. Be very careful, however, because while standing behind these, look on the floor. There's a big hole down there, and that is where you came up in the first place. You can fall down there, and you can die. And yes, there's a bloopers of that coming later onto the channel, because I fell in there on the recording. Now, once they're all dead... Each one of you needs to go to your original places. So remember where you first came in, or at least get one each. Once they're all dead, you have one person call a timer. Three, two, one, everybody activate the synergy. If you do it at the right time, everything is fine. If you do it at the wrong time, it's not. Get into a little bubble, come back down. Once that little bubble buff is in there, it's safe to come downstairs. If it's not there, you're not. Now, you're back downstairs, you're fighting the boss again. Stay out of the lightning, watch out for the AoEs, and as you saw then, everyone got an AoE under their feet. That requires an interrupt. If you don't interrupt, it will stay there and everyone pops. If you do interrupt, it goes away. The rest of the time you have meteors coming down. You can take one or two shots each. You don't have to scatter. But if you start running around the room and overstacking them, you're in trouble. So don't move around too much unless you really have to. 60% you'll start getting shards in the room. As you can see this one here, this electric conduit type thing. They used to be a lot, lot stronger. Now they only have 100k health. You must make sure they get nuked. Otherwise, people are in trouble. They start doing drain mechanics. It's really not that nice. Now, we're also going to see another mechanic that we didn't see while we we're upstairs, but this does happen throughout the fight, and it's very important for the tank. Now, basically what will happen is the boss will split into four shades. So there's four different versions of himself, and they're all kind of uh, see-through, if you like. And none of them can be really interacted with except one that goes into a solid state. However, each one will randomly turn into a solid one and then disappear afterwards. But before it disappears, it will cast a massive wave of damage in the direction that it's facing towards the tank. Now, the problem is, if the one from the left, for example, does his AoE and it hits the group, they're dead. If the one from the right does it and it hits the group, they're dead. So, the tank must block it. And it'll ping pong around from one to the other until they're all gone and then it'll go back to the normal boss. So, you want to keep your damage down at this point, but you can't really pinpoint any particular target because they jump around. Once the first shade has vanished, you've got three left. Once two have vanished, you've got two left. Once one is the last one has vanished, then the boss will be back to normal again but this is very very tricky the tank must on instinct spot which one is now a solid one firing the aoe and block in the direction of that attack 
If you just hold block and you're facing a completely different direction, you're stuffed. You won't do it. And the group behind getting hit by that AOE will all die. Now, there's two very specific ways to do this, and how you choose to do that is entirely up to you. But how we've done it here, the tank is standing in the middle of the room. Very experienced tank anyway, so can basically see which one's doing it when and just turn their camera in order to block the attack. However, if you want a bit more help, what you can do is you can change your positioning. And you can, instead of fighting the boss in the middle of the room, fight it in the far left there where the platform is. Now, if you choose to use this method and you're not very experienced at it, even if you miss two of them, two of them are going to aim against the wall, which means no DPS are on that side. No one's going to get hit by it but the tank. The tank can survive it here if they're lucky, if they mess it up, but the group won't. So if you are inexperienced or even if you just want to make things a little bit easier on yourself, back against the wall, two of them are definitely going to hit that direction. The whole room is safe. Not to mention, of course, because it's so far across the room, if everyone decides to just step back for a minute and they're not really doing any damage, they're just trying to survive, you can actually stay out of it so far that it won't actually reach you. So you can stand in the middle and block each one after one after the other if you want to. Or you can simply back yourself into a corner, make sure you block as many as you can, of course, but the group is much, much safer. The choice on that part is up to you, but either method is just fine. Now you can see it. You can see that the, the boss is actually disappearing. Each one that goes out and goes solid does a hit, then vanishes. Then he goes solid, does a hit, then vanishes, down to the last one. And yes, if you have damage down the whole time, each one that appears will actually contribute towards damage towards his actual bar. Now we're going to go upstairs again, but bear in mind, 40% a new mechanic does come in. The Centurion that appears once every minute or so after the first one appears with the steam and the damage and all that good stuff, that will still continue, but at 40%, you will get another Centurion with a nasty constant spinning attack. You've got two ways to deal with that. You can either put it up against a tank, make sure your tank is very well protected, and just put down as much damage as you can, or you can kite it around the room, and you'll see that when we go downstairs. Just as a recap, if you watched this before, hopefully you saw what you should be doing. But be aware, you will have a lightning beam on one target. If you want to avoid being killed by that, stand behind the Centurion. Make sure the beam is actually aimed at him and you will be protected. You won't actually take the damage from it at all. Watch your feet because of the lightning. And here, three, two, one, everybody hit the synergy at once. You'll be just fine. You can see when other people's goes off, so make sure that you obviously do press it when they do. If you don't, it's messed up. And also, if you die up here or don't finish upstairs quick enough, everyone downstairs will die from meteors. There's the Centurion I was talking about at 40% onwards, where he just spins and spins and spins. Take your off tank to take him around the outside of the room, make sure nobody stands in his path. He will eventually disappear. Failing that, you can just fight him in the middle. The choice on that, again, depending on the group, is up to you. So from here on out, it's pretty much rinse repeat. You've got all the mechanics in the room now. The basic Centurion, you need to kill him. The second Centurion, kite him around the room, he'll kill himself. The boss, obviously interrupt him if he's doing his um, interruptible attack and stay out of trouble. The frontal AoE, either block it or stay out of it and make sure you kill the shards. The shade mechanic that happens will happen throughout the fight. So make sure the tank is very aware of that and listen to Devaith because if he does speak, you're going to have to go upstairs. There's no execute panic phase as such. There's no real enrage mechanic. You've got all the mechanics in the room from 40% onwards. So if you can survive and kill the boss, or hit the boss at least, and still do the upstairs mechanic at 40%, if you are capable of doing that as a group, you don't need to change anything you're now doing, and the fight will inevitably end. Just keep doing what you're doing. Even if you've got, say, 10k DPS, it really doesn't make a difference at this stage. As long as you can survive upstairs, past that phase, and then come down again, and still follow these mechanics, 40% and 1% are exactly the same. Some people try to over-nuke it and skip the upstairs part. I honestly wouldn't recommend doing that. Just always go upstairs, always fix that, so that danger part of the fight is alleviated. You don't want to force yourself to let, actually have a wipe when it's not necessary. There's no enrage. Keep doing what you're doing. Very fast recap. When he spins his staff, make sure you block because the lightning's going across the floor. Big circle of lightning on the floor. Make sure you don't stand in it. And if the meteors are coming down, don't panic. You can take a couple of them. It's just fine. Now we're going to see some nasty ad pulls. These can be done in a manner of different ways, of course. But here's the tip for you. This shape that we're standing on on the ground, there are spinning um, blades going around the room. If you stand dead center on these pads, they are pathed in such a way that none of them will actually touch you. As you can see here, we've got some spider ads coming in. You can see the bleeds, spinning blades. They are not touching us. If you get caught by that, it's going to be a nasty bleed, plus the hit as well. It's going to hit you very, very hard. So each time you move around this room, make sure you always stand in the middle of one of these pads. 
Now, something else to consider, of course, these ads can, of course, be all pulled together and nuked in a massive mess if you really want to, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're new to this. What you can do is instead get your tanks to run off and grab the ads and bring them to you, wave after wave after wave, or you can move simply from one pad to the next and deal with the ads as you come to them. Watch out for that lightning uh, line there, by the way, because if you touch it, you'll drain Magicka. You'll see those later on. Next pad, stand in the middle. None of these will touch you. Just bear in mind, of course, if you do think you're going to get caught by one of these spinning blades, and in the next fight you probably will do, you can, of course, dodge roll it to miss the initial attack and avoid the bleed entirely. So just be very careful where you put your feet. You should be just fine. Again, grab the ads, bring them into the middle, kill them. Move to the next pad, grab the ads, bring them in the middle, kill them. It's rinse, repeat. They're not that bad. They don't hit too hard, but obviously make sure that your tanks are maintaining taunts on them because you don't want a DPS constantly being slapped. But... It's entirely up to you as to how you go about this. If your group has a lot of AoE damage and you really think that you can mitigate the incoming damage with heals and resistances and all the rest of it and just drop nukes on them, be my guest. But I wouldn't recommend it, like I said, for a new group. Most of these are just spiders anyway, so you can pull them in about four to six at a time. However, the tank did get a little YOLO towards... Uh, the rest of this because you don't need to see copy and paste move to a pad killer add move to a pad killer add all the way so you do actually see quite a big pull in a moment um again lots of people like to do that but it depends on your group if you think this is going to wipe you don't do it it's quite straightforward now when we get to the end of course that's where we have no more ads left and we're about to meet the next boss which is a big spider and you will have to have pretty good awareness of the situation these spin and blades are going to be in the fight it's a very active fight where you're moving around a lot and these are going to get in your way so if it's coming straight at you dodge roll it if your healers are on point fair enough but do not stand in one deliberately for any long period of time especially not the slow ones because you will take rapid escalating damage you really don't want to do that now, if you look very carefully once we get to the fight, we're almost there. Just look down the corridor there. The uh, There is a button on the right-hand side, and it's lit up. Kind of, It's just a light bulb, basically. One person will need to press that when the boss gets close. So what the tank will now do is run down the alley, pull the boss in, and when it gets to that point, just before you hit that button, a beam comes out and stuns the boss. And that is your opportunity to do as much damage as you possibly can. Now, you can't damage the boss while he's in his shielded state, and I don't recommend you touch him either because it really, really hurts, but once the shield is down, you can hit him hard. But you can also pre-plan your dots and put them down early just so they're ticking over when he does actually get broken out of his shield. Again, that's the button that does that. He's in for a very short period of time, so do as much damage as you can, but do not panic if you don't have high damage. Just do what you can for the moment. Now we have to do the one thing I tell you usually not to do in mechanics, and you need to run away. When he gets his shield up, you need to leg it, and the tank needs to grab these two adds and turn them away from the group. The spider's chasing us, of course. You do want to kill these as soon as possible before you sit him down again, but be very careful not to fire projectiles at the two-hander because he will reflect them. Anything with a bow, um, which is fired as a projectile, or anything with a staff, destruction staff, anything like that, can be flung back at you, so be very, very careful. Now, again, once... The spider has caught up to the button, you press it, the beam comes out, he sits down, you do damage. Rinse, repeat. Now, if you've got to a point where the ads aren't quite dead yet and the spider has caught up to you, do not panic. You can, of course, skip that button and continue round the room to the next one, which gives you more time to kill the ads, it gives you more time to build up ultimate and all that good stuff. But do not get caught underneath the spider because he really hurts. If you hit him and reflect stuff, you don't want to do that. One more thing to bear in mind, of course, each time you press a button, the boss will get faster and faster and faster. So if you haven't killed the ads yet and you want to go past one of the buttons, you can do so. But just remember, each press will make him quicker. You can take as long as you like in this fight, as long as you don't make him go too fast. The key points here are to make sure that you stay away from your shield at all time. We've got chained in there. Be very careful. Um, make sure you kill those ads quickly and then kill him when you stun him with the button. You can't do any damage any other time. The trick to this is, however, to make sure that you do not let those little things enrage or get any stronger than they already are. They'll gain a massive damage shield if you make them stand near the boss too long and live. So if you don't kill the adds and if they sit underneath the boss, they will be harder to kill and then you'll end up with abundance of them. So what you need to do is kill the adds, stun the boss, hit the boss. Kill the adds, stun the boss, hit the boss. And just go round in a circle as long as it takes. It's up to you. But just remember one more thing again. If you skip too many buttons 
because you want the extra time, he will get faster and faster. So it's not really a DPS race as far as the boss is concerned, but you do want to kill those adds quickly, if you can. And don't fire projectiles at the one with the fire damage shield around him, the two-hander. That is a problem. Now, once this is all done, you get to run through the whole gauntlet all over again with no spinny blades and no adds, all the way to the door. And we're going to go outside, and the next boss is not coming up just yet, but this is the one that will usually stop your pug from progressing. It's quite rough. Not quite as bad as the V-Mole twins, but it's pretty tricky if you don't pay very close attention, especially the tanks. Yes, we lost a tank under the spider a moment ago. That's what happens when you get stuck when the shield is up. Rip Sam. Now, this horrible gauntlet of mess is not quite as bad as it looks. If you touch the beams, you will have a magicka drain, which is horrible, and you'll be snared. But just take your time. All you need to do, basically, is get to the other end. And we know how to deal with the spinners anyway. Just don't stand in them or dodge roll through them. And on the timer, these will actually disappear, and you can just walk through. If you're impatient, of course, ding on a speed buff, dodge roll a couple times, and run to the end. You will need some hefty heals, though, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But it's up to you and your group. It depends on how you're feeling at the time. But once you get to the end, we're going to be dealing with a, a new amount of adds. A, some different ones. You've seen a couple because of the spider boss, but we're now going to get um, some different mechanics. They're not too stressful, but you do have to pay attention. Don't just run around headless because, well, let's face it, you'll end up dead. So, you know how these work. Stand in the middle of the pad. The, the spinners won't actually reach you. You have to kill these. The tank needs to turn his way from the group. And if you can stack them, then so be it. But watch out for the two-hander because he reflects direct damage if it is in the form of a projectile. The others aren't too bad, but you do need to get them down fairly quickly if you can. They do cast some nasty ground-based AoEs. But as long as they're maintained and a taunt, at least your tanks, I mean, and your heals are coming, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with them. It's not a race as such, but obviously the shorter time they're in the room, the less issues you have to deal with. Now, the, the corridors pretty much rinse repeat till the end. We've got beams, you've got spinners you have to stay out of, and we've got some ad pulls. We've got some kagutis in here as well, so watch out for those. You do have to be careful of the charge, but you've already seen them at the beginning of the trial. So if you've dealt with these before, you should be able to deal with them again. Again, bring them all in. Make sure you're very, very careful of any two-handers, because they do reflect. The capacitors can charge up some nasty abilities on the ground, so make sure you watch your feet and stay in the heels as well. Don't dance around like a headless chicken because if you leave the group too far, those things are going to stack up and they're really going to hurt. So again, watch your feet. Now, again, these do snare you. You do get magic a drain. You can kind of dodge all through them and just deal with it. It's not really that bad. There aren't any real situations where that becomes a massive problem except for those two ad pulls. And as you saw, then it's really not um, that stressful. Some of the outside ones are actually a lot, lot harder than the ones in the corridor. This dude here needs to die, of course, but as a tank, make sure you turn it away from the group. As a group, make sure you stay behind it. But be very careful because he does have nasty spin attacks. I know people like to stack and burn these enemies and kill them all at once. If you're experienced, yes, of course, you can do that. Watch the spin. But if not, pace it. Because when these die, they will spawn or wake up three spheres. Now, these can be positioned all together or just like the beginning of the trial, you can deal with them one after the other after the other as long as what? As long as they are being interrupted it's very important that you pay attention to your basic mechanics this trial is absolutely flooded with basics block dodge interrupt they are essential in this trial now as you can see we've got a couple stacked up so aoe is obviously very welcome here but again there's no enrage mechanic take as long as you need make sure they're interrupted they do fire projectiles that end up landing on the ground and putting nasty aoe's down they don't hit that hard as long as you've got constant heals coming but just don't deliberately stand in them each one of these pulls is relatively similar to the last. You will get spheres waking up for each one of these centurions that you actually knock down, so be very careful, but there are going to be other adds towards the end as well. Just make sure, of course, that your tank is paying attention to the positioning of the enemies, and make sure everybody else is paying attention to the mechanics of each individual ad. Now, you can grab these and stuff them in the corner and drop ultimates on them, or you can take your time on them. It's entirely up to you, but just be aware, again, that two-handed with a damage shield will reflect stuff. You can see someone getting fire, uh, light attacks being flung back at them there. Be very, very careful. So you can deal with the capacitors first, then deal with them last if you really want to, to get rid of all those nasty AoEs. Or you can take down a two-hander and then projectiles are back on the menu. It's entirely up to you. At the end of the day, the trick is control. You've got your heals and your mitigation, and you've got control of the ads. doesn't matter how long you take. 
Now, the spheres, as you can see, are placed on the ground. They are down and inactive. But remember, as soon as you kill this guy, they will wake up. So remember where they're standing. Some people like to pull them down the hill and just grab everything together. Other people like to do them individually, one after the other after the other. The choice is honestly yours. But remember, stay out of that spin. Now, what we've done is we've actually decided to run down the hill. So all of them up the top there are going to be pulled together if possible. That, again, is a choice. It depends on how you want to deal with it. If you want to speed things up, run in and nuke them all stacked up. If you want to just take your time and play um, very safe, you can, of course, do one after the other after the other and just maintain aggro on them all. But that was a very good stack, as you can see, and now we're free to drop stuff on their heads. Again, I can't stress this enough. You must interrupt these whenever they channel. And yes, that means if there's four of them channeling at the same time, make sure that you just bash, 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 bash. I've had people say to me before, I can't interrupt, I don't have a bash on my bar. I don't know what you did in the tutorial when you first started the game, but that is something that anyone can do. You don't need an ability, it's a basic mechanic. Now this boss is tricky. We've got three bosses in the room, one on the left, one on the right, and one in the middle. Now, you might want to put some more defensive buffs on on this one, because execute is hell. You need to get them all down evenly, and then you'll have to bring them all back in again together and hit them all at once. But that will make a lot more sense when we get through to the fight. So split your group up into two groups. Six on the left, six on the right. One with a healer and a tank, the other with a healer and a tank. To start off with, bring them all in together and do as much damage as you can until around about the 90% mark. You can go a little bit earlier just to be safe, but around the 90% mark you should be good. And you need to make sure these don't stay together for too long. So to be safe, around 92-ish if you can. Make sure one group on the left goes with one boss, one group on the right goes with the other, the middle will stay where he is. Now as you can see here, this one is putting his sword into the ground. This will actually emit nasty effects across the floor, which will then spawn kind of claws out of the floor. And if you stand in them, you'll get sucked in and die. So be very careful of that. And you'll see on the other side, this boss will actually cast flame abilities. Three massive ones, in fact, that will ping across the room. And if it touches you, it'll put a nasty dot on you and it'll hurt like hell. So you want to be purged by that as soon as possible if you get caught. Now remember you haven't got much room for error here. If you put these two close together, they will do loads and loads of damage and people will die. But you do have to swap them. Now the tanks will see a kind of a bubbles effect aiming at them from individual bosses. And if that happens, that's when they need to call to swap. You can either wait for the heavy attack and while he's in his motions kind of literally swap places with each other. Or you can just range taunt each other's bosses and swap them over. Depends on the tanks, depends on how you work together. But you need to swap bosses nonetheless. If you don't do it quick enough and you get 10 stacks of the debuff from the boss, you will take a one shot. Now, at 71% of each of the two bosses on the side, you want to start focusing on the middle boss instead. You want to get them all down to about 72, 71. The threshold is actually 69, but dots can push it over very, very quickly. Now, the middle boss mechanic, he has a damage shield around him. Don't touch it because you'll die. And when he puts his hand in the air, unlike the other ones that make the claws come out of the ground or the fire, you will get bombers in the room, as you just saw a moment ago, all the little slow-moving robots. If you don't kill them, by the time they get to the damage shield, they'll be empowered, and they will shoot across the room at one random target and blow them up and knock them down. If it happens to be one of the tanks and they get knocked down during a heavy attack, they're screwed. So pay very close attention to that. Now what we've done here is we know the bombers are coming again soon. So instead of pushing the bosses to the next phase, which is invulnerable by the way, we're waiting for the bombers to come in and we're going to kill them for another round. If you're already further into the fight than that, it's fine. You can continue. If not, make sure you get that phase out of the way and be safe. Now, when they're all around 69%, they will all go invincible and they will enrage, as this dude his, here is doing quite clearly. So be very careful. When they link together, they get stronger and stronger and stronger. You want to get all their health down to around 69%, they'll all go invulnerable. And after a brief period, they will be stunned, and now it's your window of opportunity to nuke them. You want to use your ultimates here. Now, once they're back in action again, and they start putting the beams together, split them up. So initially, when the fight first started, said around the 90% part, what you're really looking for is those beams. If they've got the lightning attached to each other, split them up quickly. Very much like the first boss. And again, it's just rinse, repeat. Now, the checkpoints which you want to stop at, or which you want them in the middle by, is 69, 39, and 19. But that's the point where they go invulnerable. That's too late. You want to hit them a little bit earlier. So about 72, 71, 42, 41, and about 22, 21 per target. Then bring them all in and start doing AoE damage. So what you need to do is keep an eye on their health at all times and have someone calling out when to stop hitting that target. 
during that, of course, you can see the bombers coming in. That's the middle boss's mechanic. You've got the fire coming in from the other one. That's the one on the right. And you've got the lightning on the wall, on the floor, pulling out those uh, mechanical arms. So just be very, very careful. As DPS and healers, you should be behind the bosses at all times. As tanks, you need to remember when you need to swap. You will see the bubble mechanic kind of being thrown at you. There are some nasty little 10 tick overtime uh, abilities coming at you. If it gets to 10, you're dead. Before then, you want to swap and you're good. Now, we've got bombers in the room, which is the middle boss mechanic. We have to focus though. So do not think everyone else is going to do it for you. Get off the boss and kill those bombers. If you do damage to the middle boss, so be it. You have to get him down with the other ones anyway. But above all, you must get rid of the bombers and watch your feet. Now, you can see this dude here is pushing 47. We're going to now get him to around 41. The others are already there anyway. So once he's in a happy position where we are quite um, comfortable pushing them all together, we pull them all in. All around 41, 40 together is just fine. Now, once they're all in, make sure they all hit that threshold. They all hit 39%. You don't want them to enrage for very long, and they'll be stunned. Once they all hit the same area, do as much air of effect damage as you can. Don't stand in a damage shield and drop your ultis. Once the beams come out, it's back to normal again. And this happens three times. You've got your first phase, which is around 70. You've got your second phase, which is around 40. And the third phase, which is around uh, 20. Now, the 20% phase is when you really want to start paying very close attention because you can finish the fight from there onwards. You're not going to have another opportunity to do this. So be very, very careful. Now, once they get to the middle on the final phase... This is where you really, really want to make sure you get rid of those bombers. There's no point in missing mechanics that execute. Don't look at the health and think, it's nearly dead, I'll spam loads of buttons. Don't do that. That's not going to make it any better for you. It doesn't make your rotations faster or stronger. It doesn't increase your survivability. If you've got this far, you can finish the rest. But you have to pay attention. The tanks, above all, must never miss that swap phase. Now, it's easier for them to see than it is for us, but they will see a debuff on them. They will get a bubble kind of effect being thrown at them. If it gets to 10, they're dead. They have to swap the bosses regularly throughout the fight. Now, the middle boss is at 24. Watch your feet and don't get killed by that bubble. Yes, I did in the video initially. Um, kill the bombers and bring them all in together once they're all around 21%. If you find that the left boss, for example, is 21% and the one on the right is about 30, it doesn't matter that one group has got more damage than the other. What matters is you stop hitting the one that's at his threshold and you focus on the other one instead. When they're all around the same, bring them in. They will link up, they will get stronger, but they will be stunned once they get to that boom phase. As you can see, now about to hit it, this one's on 23%, which is a little bit on the risky side, but we dropped our ultimates early and pushed them all down. Here, you can go for as much nuke as you like, if you've got it. If not, just survive and split them up again once the beams happen. Now, you need to kill these individually one after the other. It's easier if you get rid of the middle one because then all the bombers are taken away from the equation. Keep the other two either side. You will never have to go to the middle again. And be aware, tanks, you will still need to do your swap mechanics. And DPS, you will still get the arms coming out of the ground and you will still get the flames coming out of the floor as well when he hits his sword against the tank. Just decide which one you're going to kill first and then move on to the next. Do not bring them together at execute if they've already been split up because they will enrage. So to recap in the simplest way possible, 90 odd percent or when the beams start attaching each other is when you want the first split up to happen. Half your group go one side, half your group go the other. Now, you get each boss down gradually while watching out for the other mechanics. Watch out for the fingers or the arms in the ground. Watch out for the fire on the ground. If the bombers come up, make sure you kill them. 71% stop damage on the side one, start on the middle one. Same goes for 41%, same goes for 21%. You can deviate from that either way, 1% plus or minus if you want, but be very careful because the actual checkpoints are 69, 39, and 19. After 19%, you never need to bring them back in again and always focus the middle one first when it comes to execute. There is no need to panic. There is no need to try and think that jumping around doing extra shapes is going to make it any easier. Execute is just as simple or straightforward as the rest of the phases if you pay attention to the mechanics it can feel very very complicated but it's not as bad as you think as long as you do follow those rules you must stop damage at certain percentages and control the fight and then bring them in all together save your ultimates for either the bombers or when they're all together just remember if the beams are connected you're screwed so stay apart from them as much as possible when that happens and also do not fail the swap phase as a tank that is the most important thing to remember 
otherwise everyone's dead. Standard ad pool here, you've seen these enemies before. Stand in the middle of the pad, the bleed from the spinners, or in actual fact, any damage from the spinners won't touch you, and you can kill these on the spot. Just be aware, of course, one of them does reflect projectile damage. So if you are a Magicka DPS, for example, you might actually benefit from using the lightning stuff to heavy attack them while using crush and shock because that counts as a channel and a direct damage ability rather than projectile abilities which come from light attacks and heavy attacks and the flame stuff so if you are one of those groups that is struggling in here and those things keep killing you you might want to swap weapons for those ad pulls just so you don't have all that extra reflecting stuff coming back at you failing that make sure your healers are awake and uh, you don't kill yourself but no vis and Damage shields and all that good stuff can actually help a hell of a lot in there. Because they do hit quite hard, especially if you're the one getting hit with your own stuff. But for the most part, as you saw there, stack and burn them. Hold them still. Don't drop your taunts. Bear in mind, of course, the water that we just ran through is electrocuted. It will actually zap you and drain your magicka just like the beams will that we ran through earlier. So try not to stay in the water too long because otherwise you are going to die. Now further up is another ad pool. Same as before, stand in the middle of the platform. If you get caught by the bleed, do not panic, but you can take a Purify Synergy or get cleansed by somebody else, but essentially stand in the middle. The tanks need to control the adds, the DPS need to kill it, and the healers need to keep people alive. It's pretty standard stuff. Watch the ground for those lightning uh, or projectile type effects that go up into the air and come back down and smash, and also make sure that if anything reflects direct projectiles, that you do not hit them with those. So just to recap on that, in case people didn't pick up on it last time, the ones with the damage shields and the two-handers, they reflect damage while their damage shield is up. So no light attacks with a flame stuff, a bow, an ice stuff, or a heavy attack with those either. No poison injection snipes or any of that stuff. Make sure that you are using stuff that is either channeled or damage over time. Now again here, be very careful. You want to run along the edges if you can because the water will zap you, you'll take damage, you'll be drained, your magicka will suck and you'll be really, really slow. So be very careful when fighting in here, you want to kind of hug the walls. The tank should bring everything in. Of course, deal with the Dissector if you can, first of all, because he's the closest one. But once he's down, you want to go for the one with the damage shield, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Be very careful when getting him from range because lots of people do tend to fire projectiles instead of direct damage that is not necessarily flung and it can get really awkward. The Califactors are a pain. Pay close attention to what you're using. If the damage shield is down, you're good. If it's up, change what you're using. You can't do dummy smash rotations on those because they will kill you. We've been over that before in the rest of the video, but just be aware that is very important. And a lot of groups do actually wipe on these ads because of that fail. The two-handers are the ones that project stuff back. Even Flames of Oblivion that I'm using now, that can come back at me, so you gotta be careful. Now this pull itself can be done quite straightforward. You can just deal with the three, but if you're really, really experienced and your tank's a bit brave and your group is capable of doing so, you can either pull the second group early or you can fight them all at the same time. But I wouldn't personally recommend that for starting out. If you're a new group and you've got this far, there's no point making it more difficult for yourself. Take your time. Again, if you're comfortable with it, that's absolutely fine. But remember, the one with the damage shield, the Califactor has to go down first if you can help it. The dual wield one does hurt. He has got bleed damage and stuff like that. The capacitor does hurt. He's got nasty AoEs, but you have to focus that one with the shield because otherwise you're going to kill yourself. And we're almost there. Now, the last boss is really not that bad. It's a long fight. But it's not that bad mechanic-wise if you stick together and pay attention. Now, I'm going to show you a very simple uh, kind of formation right now for the execute. Now, as you can see here, there's a shape in the middle. And we've got people standing on the rails. There are tracks going through the middle of the room. There's four of them. And then there are corners to this shape as well. As you can see, there are four people in the middle. Now, you also want four more people on top of those. You'll see that they're double stacking. So you want your DPSs on the four uh, spots in the middle if you can help it. And then you have your tanks and the healers on the outside so all their AoEs and stuff can reach. You must be inside this shape though or on the edge of it. If you're outside of it where the grills are on the ground as you can see now, the, uh, the square shapes, that will kill you because that's where all the poison lies. You must be inside this shape or on the edge of it. Now I'm going to go and stand where Righty is standing right now. And the easiest way for you to spot where your position is is to use the door. At execute... I'm going to be facing the door. If I was on the right, I would have the door on my right. If I was on the left, I'd have the door on my left. You can use that as a gauge to figure out where you need to stand because it can get a little tricky when it comes to execute, figuring out where you should or shouldn't stand. And you don't want to stack on the wrong people because meteors will kill you. Anyway, the boss is here. We always stand on the right-hand side of the boss. 
except for the other tank. Now the other tank is with us, but you can choose to put it on the other side of the platform if you want to kite the arm. Um, he has a spinner and a flamethrower. The spinner needs to be aggro to keep it off the main tank, and everybody else can stand here and basically slap the boss. Now as you can see that big AOE at the back, you don't want to stand there, so the tank is going to have to stand in front of the boss and be brave. Now, you can of course take a DPS to the other side to kite the spinner if you want, but it's entirely up to you. Now we haven't done that here because we are quite comfortable stacking and burning on this side, but you can choose to do that if you want. Now the flame damage from the arm and the meteors that are landing down or the missiles that are landing down do hurt quite a bit but because we're underneath the arm we don't get the full effect of it and if you've got enough heals in your group and damage shields just stack them here and you'll be just fine. You can actually fight through it. If you're in front of it it's really going to hurt. Now the flame arm will disappear at about 88% health and then all the adds will come in. So we go around this corner here into our safe area so that we don't actually get stomped and all the rest of it. We are still going to get hit by a lot of missiles but it's a lot, lot safer to be this distance away from the boss bring all the adds around and we will deal with these as and when we can. Now you do want to get rid of the two-handers as fast as possible because remember they do reflect your projectile abilities but get as much air of effect down as possible while your healers and tanks give you as much mitigation and heals as possible because you are going to take a lot of damage here. If you stand around this corner it's not too bad because you kind of stack the mechanics but if you stand too close to the boss it's going to get spread all over the place and you're going to die. Once the adds are down push the boss then to 85% and he'll go into his next phase. If you push him to the next phase while the adds are up, you're going to have a problem. Now, once he starts walking off, drop down, stand in the center. You're going to get a terminal up here. You want to kill it. Do not stand in that AoE. At the same time, you will have a spinner going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it will bleed. It will hit hard. Make sure your heals are on point at this stage. You must make sure people are getting a lot of heals. Once the terminal is down, run past the boss. Do not stand on the either side because the poison will get you and move to the next one. We've moved to the right. We're going to kill two terminals. Technically four, but you only need to kill two. You can kill four if you want, but you only need to kill two of them. Just make sure you survive this phase here. Do not hold block because it will rinse your stamina. Just trust your healers. Keep up vigors if you've got them, if you really want to help the group with that. Damage shields and heals are fine. When he stands up, always go to the right-hand side of where he's standing. So his left arm, your right foot make sure he's in front of you always go that way no matter where he stands and now we rinse repeat we basically go again and when he gets down to the next checkpoint we will actually go and kill the ads and come back and repeat 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 the next phase is actually 65 percent so when he gets to about 68 69 you want to stop damaging the boss and kill the ads now the ads you saw earlier do spawn at specific times they spawn at 90 about 87 70 76 uh, 67 even and then 50 and 47 you get two ads per phase. They're very close together, and that's why you saw us pull them all to one side. Around the time that we want to stop hitting the bosses, around the time they spawn anyway. So get your off tank to grab them all together, pin them on the side. Once his arm blows up, that's when we fight them. And that happens three times. Open at 85, 65, and 45, and then execute. That's a little different, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, the rest of the fight is basically quite straightforward. You just rinse repeat throughout until you get to execute. So you knock the arm down, kill the adds in the corner, and then come back and push him to the middle, rinse repeat. Now, during the fight, if you do see an enemy called a Fasimal or Fasimil, I don't know how you pronounce it, one of those, basically that is a reflection of someone that just died. So you want to be very, very careful if anyone does die because you're going to be up against something that they already are. So the same class. If you go up against the Sorks, by the way, they'll drop mines on the ground. They're really, really nasty. Wardens aren't very nice. EBC had motors flying across the room. Where they got that ability from, I don't know. It's supposed to be a Shalk, but whatever. Be very, very careful. This phase, again, the arm's blown off. Kill the adds, stay together, take your heals and damage shields, and relax. Do not panic, run around like a headless chicken. If you're melee, just make sure that you're inside the heals. If you're ranged, obviously, make sure you're with the group anyway. And do not throw projectiles at those damage shields, because they will be flung backwards. Once the adds are all dealt with, including any that may be left over from the deaths that you might have, that's when you want to push the boss and go and sit downstairs again. Bear in mind, of course, the longer you are in this fight, the more enraged they get. So you must use your ultimates here if you can. You don't need to use your ultimates on the terminals down below. Save them for the adds and nuke them all faster if you can. It's not a test of DPS as such, but obviously the more you've got, the less uh, of a problem it becomes when things do go enraged. If you are having issues and you do enrage stuff all the time, then the only thing you can do for that is turn your group into a little bit more uh, tanky, if you like. Add some more resists, add some more health, add some damage mitigation bonuses and buffs and skills and all that good stuff. Now, we kill the terminal. Do not block. It will rinse your uh, stamina 
And once this has uh, finished, once we've got rid of it, we go into the next phase. We run across and kill the next terminal, and then we sit there and heal. This is important. I didn't mention it in the first phase, but it is important for every phase. Do not hit that boss when he is covered in electric in the middle of the room crouching down. Because every single ability you hit him with, he will fire another missile up into the air and hit the group. So pets, get rid of them. Be very careful. Or projectiles, stop firing them. Dots, don't let them last. Make sure they have finished. Don't recast them. When he goes back to his position, again, we always go to this side. For us, we're on kind of the right. And for him, we're on his left arm. The flame arm. Always look for the flame arm. Go up and stand under it. This is rinse, repeat for pretty much the rest of the fight. It's very long. You don't need a lot of DPS for this. In fact, I've seen groups and physically watched them and then calculated their damage at the end. They had 27k DPS per person at execute in an actual fight buffed up. And that was their first clear. I've seen people do this with stupid amounts of damage and clear it. It doesn't matter how much you've got. What matters is if you can survive during execute. It's very important. Now, there are some other things to know about the boss itself when it comes to the tank. He will uppercut and he will stomp, as you saw then. The stomp is a very specific mechanic and it happens for a reason. If the tank is too far away from the boss because he doesn't walk around, or if you drop a taunt, he will jump. If he jumps three times, he will wipe the entire group. So do not let that happen. It helps if your tank has got shield charge or shield assault um, slotted so that if you do get knocked backwards by his normal stomp, you can actually get back in quite quickly. The one-footed stomp, everyone can um, block, and they just get knocked backwards if they fail. But if the tank goes too far back, again, he'll do the other one, and three of them will kill you. So be very, very careful with that. The uppercut, however, that happens, and it's quite funny. If you see the uppercut, make sure, for God's sake, that tank is blocking, otherwise you are dead. Now, at this phase, we've seen this before. Watch your feet. You've got lightning everywhere. You've got fire everywhere. You've got... Big, big AoEs. Stay together, stay in the heals, stay in the damage shields. Bring as many Novas and Permafrosts as you can if you've got access to them. If you've got Necros, make sure you've got the Res Ulti because you might need it. This is all about mitigation and survival at this point. It doesn't matter whether you can do this fight in two minutes or two hours. It will happen. You just keep doing what you're doing. He's walking into the middle. He's going to recharge. You kill two terminals. Do not stand on the grills at the sides because it's covered in poison. You'll die within two ticks. It's very, very aggressive. Do not block the spinners, just make sure you outheal them, and do not damage the boss in the middle. This is the third and final phase of killing the terminals. Yes, of course, you can go around and kill all four, but honestly, you only need to kill two as long as your group is capable of healing up. This is a very long fight of rinse and repeat. And this, by the way, happens to be the hard mode. The regular version is really not that different. You have a couple of less adds, and the boss has less health. That's pretty much it. Unfortunately, this particular fight Although it looks cool, can be quite a drag. And the hard mode, there's barely anything in it. Other fights are much, much more mechanically challenging when it comes to the difference between regular and hard mode. And this one, quite honestly, isn't. The execute's a little bit longer, but that's what you expect from a hard mode anyway. You would expect more and more mechanics, but really there aren't that many. Now, again, stack and burn on the arm until the arm goes down and then the ads need to be dealt with or deal with the ads before them but if you do have the ads and the flame arm at the same time it can get a little stressful so just be very very careful if you've got the extra damage to push the arm off and then kill the ads fine if not you might want to separate yourselves from the boss and go around the corner and kill them there and come back again how you deal with it yourself is entirely up to you that tank just got uppercut across the room which is hilarious. Now, if he shield charges back in quick enough, he's fine. There's just a single stomp. But if he does a two-foot stomp, that's a mess. So you've got to get back in quick. Now, execute. Remember your positions. Remember the positions you decided to have in the first place. Use the door as a gauge. That's where you must stand and do not deviate from that at all. Now, before we push him into the middle, which is 25%, we actually want to get rid of the ads. Because if you don't get rid of the ads, you are stuffed. At execute... We're talking under 27%. That's when you have to be very, very careful not to push him. If you do push him, you're going to have the adds during execute. You don't want that. Now, also, now that he's low health, these adds will keep spawning. So every, I think it's every couple of minutes or so, they will keep spawning. So you have to be very, very careful. If you've got high DPS, not a problem. You're probably going to kill these quick enough and then get the boss down quick enough. If you don't have high DPS, you need to pace yourselves and time this very, very well. Otherwise, it will overlap and it really hurts. So the way to do that would be to stack them up 
with as much damage mitigation for your group and survival as possible and try and evenly kill all of them at the same time with your AoE if you have it present. It can get really, really tricky if you start having too many adds. So you can choose to stay with the boss for longer and have another ad phase if you want. If you have to do seven more ad phases just until you're comfortable, that's fine. Now, positions. When he walks into the middle, get to your spots quickly. As you can see, meteors are landing on the people on the outside and they will overlap if you're not careful. So watch your feet. You can see I'm between them. I'm not getting hit with them at all. The ones on the outside, the four, the two healers and the two tanks are the ones taking most of the flak. And they are guarding each other just in case they get in trouble. For us, for DPSs, what did you do on the target dummy? This, do your rotations. Now, the lower the health, obviously, the more people get meteors and the poison comes in as well. This is why you don't go on the outside. So to start with, try and do as much damage as you can. Once you get past the 10% phase, that's when it gets more stressful. Your healers are going to have to work their asses off here. But don't panic. Just stack and burn. It doesn't matter whether you've got 90k DPS or 20k DPS. This phase is doable as long as you can survive. So you want Novas on timer. You want Permafrost on timer. I have seen groups do this with very, very low DPS and it's still just fine. It's all mechanics from here on out. And if you can't survive it, just buff up your group with more resistances and more survivability overall. So hopefully that helped, hopefully it wasn't too boring, hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach this particular trial. It can be quite tricky, especially for newer group, but just remember most of the bosses don't actually have any physical enrage mechanic as long as you can control what's going on. You are the one that decides how much health it has before you start finishing the boss. And also, it doesn't matter how much damage you do or don't have, what matters is that you survive. Most of these have a kind of uh, situation where if you don't have enough survivability, all you need to do is plug that and it's inevitable that you will finish it, especially the last boss. Even with low damage, you can still do it. People love having those nuke fests, but start from the ground up. Learn how to do it, get your mitigation and survival in, and then squish down a bit over time once you get good at it. Anyway, massive shout out to Working As Intended, Guild on PS4 EU server for helping me out with this video. Much appreciated, and it was actually very, very helpful to have people that were capable of doing the mechanics, kind of slowing down what they would usually do in order to help you lot see what's going on. Yes, they can nuke the crap out of it, and they do it on a daily basis, but I had to tell them to slow down so you guys can see it. So a big shout out to those guys there. Thank you very, very much indeed. If you want any information on their guild, that is in the description right now. And of course, thank you all very, very much for watching. A huge appreciate support. If you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website, zynodgaming.com, Instagram, Twitch, which I live stream on every single night from 10 p.m. UK time, except for Wednesdays, or otherwise, if I say on Twitter, maybe I'm not available, but usually every day apart from Wednesdays, there's links in the description. Failure than that, you could just Google Zyno. There's loads of stuff. Enjoy! Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.